Do you want to look at the camera? Mop around the edge of this room. What's this? That's the new intro. Tell us what we're doing today, Jonah. So we're going to a book launch in Bishop's Castle. It's by a guy called Andrew Peters. How do you say his name? Andrew Fusek Peters. <laughs> He's a wildlife photographer. Um, I like his photos. He... <laughs> they, they make me feel warm inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he warm and fuzzy. He took um, the photo of the supermoon a few months ago. You probably saw it. Um, we'll put it up on the screen now. One, two, three. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Cheers! We're here at Bishop's Castle again. Wonderful. Outside Bank House waiting for a, a talk by a photographer. So that's why we've got the Pims and we've got the Onion Bargies. A little while ago I bought Claire the, uh, the book by this fellow called Dip. If you want to have a look at it, please do. It's all about whale swimming in Shropshire. And, uh, Later on, we'll be do we'll be doing a bit of wild swimming, perhaps at uh, Shell, Shell Pool. But we're looking forward to it, and it's going to be 7:30. And as you can see, my watch, it's time for the talk. So oh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows when it'll start? Thank you, Mum. This is my mum, folks. I had the great privilege of having a lifetime interview. I was just about to ask you, is it a big crowd? Have we got, is everybody able to see? We're going to analyse this picture for 45 minutes before we do anything. I picked up the camera about uh, four and a half years ago, uh, about two and a half years ago, in fact, November 2014, when this photo was taken. I got approached by Pete Carty and um, Simon Kutu from the National Trust and Natural England, um, each of whom manage uh, the Stuyper Sands and the Longman Nature Reserves. They were doing very long, advanced view of a project called Stepping Stones, which launches this year. And Stepping Stones is about having some joined up thinking about these amazing nature reserves. We got we got jewels in Shropshire. We got we can beat the Lake District. We can beat the Highlands of Scotland. Or maybe not beat them, but we can be equal to them. Um, but what we have in those places is a very fragile uh, ecology and some species are doing well, some species are really, really, really not doing well. There is something about a, an art form when somebody is actually paying you to do it, it changes the way you view yourself and view it. And you sort of take yourself a bit more seriously, which shouldn't be how it is, but it is how it is. And we have, a, we have on these uplands, which were degraded landscapes in 1965 when the min was bought, it was a degraded grouse moor. Uh, it was overrun with bracken, it was in poor condition, overgrazed, uh, and there's been a lot of work to bring it back. So we have wonderful uh, flowering heather, six weeks of the year. Um, that was used by the Daily Express. One of the things, one of the, the, the doors that opens when you start to work with conservation groups and rangers and, uh, is that you can go out in their buggies or their 4 by 4s and the wildlife is used to it. So we're literally right next to this grouse, because we're in the 4 by 4 and the, the grouse is just going, we don't care, we do not care, we do not care. So... I started to do more work on landscapes and, and, and it really pays to get up really early. And this was January um, the, last year, uh, going up the Burway with a view towards the Recon. The light really is like that. So people say, oh, what do you do to your photos? I don't do anything, I don't need to. Nature does it. Nature is the greatest photoshopper of all. That is the colour. It was intense. In fact, you don't need to take drugs because there it is. You know what I mean? Oh, the colours went really bright. Yeah, it's called dawn. Okay. All the uh, the sons of the farmers are taking the piss out of you. You know that you're accepted in that community, and it's quite a. I feel quite moved by it because they they just say, oh, this is happening there. 
And I say, so you don't mind me walking on the, yeah, just go where you want, Andy. Our land's your land. And they mean it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kennington. Yeah, Kennington. Don't scare them. But don't scare them and don't go in and hassle them, exactly. Um, but because I was walking the land, I knew the places where they liked to feed. I knew the times of day where they could be. So that's a lot of intimate knowledge, which, you know. Um, how far yeah. away was that? So, what, how far away is that bird when I photographed it? I'm working with very big lenses. So he's above me, but occasionally they fly right over me. So he was quite close. He was probably 20 yards above me. So, you know, it depends, it depends on the day, what they're doing. Um, but a lot of work pays off of it. They say, we want quirky photos. I said, is this quirky enough for you? They say, yeah, we can sell that. Kites and crows. What we want as photographers, it's really sad. But you know, like in the playground, yeah? And if something was kicking off, and thank God you weren't part of it, you would get in that ring, wouldn't you? And you'd go, fight, 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 fight. fight. On the long mint, come April, May, the roots, the wheat ears come in, um, and you can again drive along, invisible in your car, and literally just stick your lens out the window. And uh, he's just looking, he doesn't know what you are. He's going, I don't understand, it's a car, but I'm hearing click, 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 click. Um, occasionally you get to see something quite magic, a little bit of a lie, but it is upland, it's the hill above our house. Uh, and I was out walking the dog, and I saw all that, and that was just a great, great moment. Maybe a bit too much attention. There's a window in space. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, so we've you hold just your finished. Wrist, it's a little bit sturdy. Oh, so we've just finished the talk. Film major.